you may or may not know me already, but one thing I think you do need to know about me is that I bought this investment property at 22 years old on a nine to five salary. And I can teach you how to do the exact same thing. Most people will you and tell you that, you know, all you have to do is buy their $600 course and then you too can know how to buy a real estate property and an investment property by yourself at a young age. But honestly, f all those people because they're not really worth it. And if you're buying those $600 courses, I feel bad for you because you're getting scammed. See, what they don't want you to know is that the real key behind getting an investment property at the age that I did was you have to make your money work for you. And if you're not doing that, you're not gonna get it. But Jordan, you're gonna be- I have my money in Bitcoin, and I have my money in stocks, and I have a lot of money in my savings account, and I work three jobs. It's quality, not quantity. I was able to do this because I saw such a high return on the stocks that I had. And without those, I wouldn't be here. And then yet again, you're gonna and you're going to say to me, but Jordan, you're not telling me exactly how to do it, and are you just gonna sell me a fucking $700 course that I have to buy from you? No, I'm not. And with a few easy steps, I can teach you exactly how I did it, and exactly what you're going to have to do in order to be like me and get this house. But just one last thing before we get to that. Just a little bit of a story time. When I was 17, 18, and 19, everybody always told me that I could never get this house and that it wasn't right for me and I should just wait. But what I said to myself and what I said to those people is I'm not the standard. I'm not what everybody wants me to be. And I'm not going to settle for just not getting it. And so the first thing that you need to do is you need to clear your mindset. You need to be in the mindset that you are going to get a real estate property for yourself in a specific time range. Now, as I go on and I discuss how you can utilize the same strategies that I utilized and end up making a ton on your money in and setting out a timeline for when you can expect to get the property, you can start to set realistic goals for yourself because you do always have to be realistic. You can't set a goal like in six months, I'm gonna have a million dollars with this because it's not a get rich quick scheme. It's standard quality practice gets you to whatever dream you wanna get. Two days later. So finally, what's the secret? Well. The main secret really is just make every single dollar you have work. I know that doesn't sound complicated, but when we break it down, it is a little bit tedious. So the first thing I did is I didn't use a standard savings account. Standard savings accounts have anywhere from 0.01% interest to about 1.5% interest if you go with a high yield savings account. And I wasn't trying to make such a small return on my money. So instead, I leverage a brokerage account. So a brokerage account basically is just a place that allows you to trade stocks. And what I did was I traded high value quality stocks. With my money in those stocks, I knew that I really didn't have a high percentage chance of losing a ton of my money. Additionally, I was putting about 80% of my take-up bank into this brokerage account, which I know sounds a little bit ridiculous and most people can't do. But 
keep in mind, for this project, I was in a pretty sizable time crunch. So I started the year with about $10,000, and I ended the year with my 20% down payment, which is quite a big job. And I'm not going to give you all of the numbers here, but I can show a few screenshots of how my progress was along the way. Now, I'm going to put a different video out all about exactly how I picked these stocks, but I picked very quality companies that I knew were going to perform. And then, along the way, I did a little bit of sort of day trading, but a little bit longer than day trading. So I was trading on earnings, and I made a little bit of extra cash off of that. In addition to trading stocks, I also started using credit cards to maximize my input of money from my expenditures. So basically what my premise was, is that I needed to be making money off of every dollar that I was spending. So I would use credit card rewards to get a little bit of extra money back on all my purchases. In addition, the closing costs of this house were actually mostly put on credit cards so that I could make a little bit of money back and I could delay payment of my closing costs out a couple of weeks. I know that's not preferable in some people's cases, so as SSV would say, your mileage may vary dependent upon your individual circumstances. Now, after this recent market crash, it may seem completely asinine to you to put all of your home savings into the market. But what you need to understand about the market is it will always go up, eventually, given enough time. So if you're not in a time crunch like me, there really isn't any better of an option. And for me personally, I made enough money in that short period of time so that I could pull out actually right before the market crash. Granted, it was inadvertent and I would have lost a bunch of money had I stayed in, but you never actually lose if you sell. And so if you're waiting on buying a house, leave it in the market, and then, especially if you're young, 17, 18, 19, 20 years old, leave your money in this investment, and then as soon as it turns back around again, take it out and use it. So as a little bit of a breakdown for you, I invested in companies like Pepsi and Nvidia and J&J, &J, which is, stands for Johnson & Johnson, as well as a couple of, of little companies that you'll see like Arrowhead and Snapchat. Um, those were more of my earnings uh, trades, but J&J, &J, Pepsi, and Nvidia were my biggest actual long-term holds. I picked these companies for a variety of reasons, but mainly I knew these companies had been around for a long time, had very strong financials, and there were several factors on their actual stock profile that I knew to be genuine, great company factor. Again, I'm gonna go over each individual one of these in a separate video, but I just wanted to give you kind of an overview of some of the companies that I did have in my portfolio at the time. Another thing that I did that a lot of people don't really touch on is waiting for the market to be in the right spot. So not only for the actual price of the home, but for my mortgage interest rate. So I could have gotten a crazy high interest rate a few months prior, but I waited until the Fed cut down rates enough so that my mortgage payment was actually easy enough for me to afford. My 95 salary wasn't huge, so I needed to maximize the amount of money that I had as well as how low my mortgage actually cost each month. Also, I looked at things like taxes on the property as well as I tried to get the absolute best rate on homeowners insurance. And I got a super low rate actually, and it was for combining my home and auto, but it actually beat out any of the other competitors even without that discount. Moreover, one thing I will mention is I do not believe in FHA loans. I believe FHA loans are a setup for the next 2008. And so my personal mortgage is 20% down payment, and it's a fixed rate mortgage. So I'm locked into my mortgage for a 30 year period, but at the same time, I've put 20% down, so my mortgage payment isn't really that bad overall. The final thing I will say is know your limits. So I was able to afford this house partially because I moved in with somebody as I came into this house. So they were able to help me with things like the food bill and the electric bill in the apartment that we live in. But at the same time, I could afford this house without them, and you should understand that. You shouldn't be purchasing a $500,000 house if you know you're not going to be able to afford the mortgage in the end. 
So as stated, I will be doing additional videos on how I picked the house, how I got my mortgage, and what the process looked like, as well as uh, on how to pick stocks and some of the stocks that I like. Now even after all of that, you still might be saying, well, Jordan, my debt to income is still too high, or I'm not having enough uh, money, or my credit score is not that great. Well, then find someone to partner up with. So, for example, I'm buying my second property in a few months with a partner. It's not a big deal. The more money that you can get, the better. If you have to bring three people in on it, four people in on it, if you're only getting $100 in property, that's $100 you didn't have before. So think about it before you turn it down. So after all that, the onus is still on you. You have to put yourself in the mindset of being ready to go out there and get after it. And you have to go out and start investing for yourself. I'm not a financial advisor and none of this was specifically financial advice, but you get the gist. And you can go out and do some more research, which I suggest you do, and I suggest you talk to the financial advisors and so on and so forth. But ultimately, it's up to you. If you get yourself in the headspace where you say to yourself, this is what I'm going to do, that's the first step. And I know you hear it all the time. You hear it from all the motivational speakers, you hear it from all the artists, the Ty Lopez's, the Grant Cardone's of the world. But headspace truly is the most important thing. It's the first thing that should be in your head when you go for it. But with that said, thank you so much for watching. Uh, please drop a like and subscribe. And tell me if, if you put yourself in this headspace, you know, are you in this headspace right now? And what do you hope to do when you get into this headspace? And feel free to leave your timelines down below. I'd love to hear what everybody is shooting for and how close you guys are to your goals. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time. Thank you, Ghost, for being a, a real uh, sport during this entire making of this video. You've been crying the entire time I'm walking all around. Thank you so much for that.